This video is solving radical equations. We're in section 6.6 .6 of Al Grosch's book, Developmental Math 2. So right off the bat here, we have an example for solving a radical equation. Uh, the equation is here, 3 squared of x plus 2 plus 5 equals 14. All right, we're solving for x, which means we need to isolate the x to find out what x can equal to make this a true statement. Uh, you can read through the author's explanation, but I'm going to work it out over here so that we can we can see what's having happening. So let's write the equation again. 3 square root of x plus 2 plus 5 on the outside equals 14. Okay, so there's just a few rules you have to remember. You're tr you need to isolate this radical expression, which means we're going to get rid of this plus 5, and we're going to get rid of this times 3 here and get this radical by itself because we know how to get rid of a radical when it's by itself. So we get rid of the plus 5 by subtracting 5 from both sides. So we still have 3 square root of x plus 2. 14 minus 5 is 9. Now, we need to get rid of this times 3, and we do that by dividing by 3. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. That will cancel this. We have square root of x plus 2 equals 3. Now we've isolated this radical here. So we're going to get rid of it by squaring it. And that means we need to square the other side too. The radical and the square cancel each other. So we'll be left with x plus 2 here equals 3 squared, which is 9. And now we just proceed to isolate the x by subtracting 2 from both sides, that gives us x equals 7. Now, it's really important when you're working radical equations that you check your work because it is possible to do all of this correctly and then get an answer that actually does not solve the equation because of squaring with negatives and things like that. So, we're going to need to check we check by substituting our solution, x equals 7, into our original equation for x. So we'll write that right down here. We're going to check 3 square root 7 plus 2. I just replaced the x with 7 plus 5 equals 14, and I'm going to simplify now. So let's simplify this radical. 7 plus 2 is 9, so 3 square root of 9 plus 5 equals 14. We know the square root of 9 is 3, so we're going to have 3 times 3 plus 5 equals 14. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 5 does indeed make 14, so this checks out. Alright, we've got another equation here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Square root of x minus 5 minus 3 equals 4. So the third, first thing we need to do is isolate this radical expression by adding 3 to both sides. And that gives us a square root of x minus 5 equals 7. Now we can get rid of that radical by squaring both sides. So we end up with x minus 5 equals 49. And then we add 5 to isolate the x. So x equals 54. And you should take the time to check that just to make sure. Uh, you might be able to do it mentally since we said that. Put the 54 here. 54 minus 5 is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. 7 minus 3 makes 4. So, I mean, sometimes they're, they're simple enough that you can do it mentally. That checks out. Let's try the next one. Same thing. We need to isolate this radical by subtracting 5 from both sides. So we have the square root of x minus 2 equals negative 3. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Now that we've isolated the radical, we can get rid of it by squaring. Do the same thing on both sides. You get x minus 2 equals now we've got the square root, uh, the square of negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 makes positive 9. 
and then we're going to add 2 to isolate this x. So we get x equals 11. I suspect something strange is going to happen here, so I'm going to really, I'm going to go ahead and check it. I have x equals 11, so I'm going to substitute that in here for x. So square root of 11 minus 2 plus 5 equals 2. 11 minus 2 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Guess what? 3 plus 5 equals 8, not 2. This doesn't check out, and this is what I mentioned on the last page. Um, the reason this happened was because back here we squared a negative number. Whenever this happens, you need to make sure you check your solution because sometimes, even though you did the whole process correctly, you get a solution that actually does not check out. So what is the solution here? There's no solution. If this happens to you and you check, you find out that there is no solution. All right, let's do a few more of these. Uh, we're going to try to isolate this radical, but this is kind of strange having an x here. We're still going to do the same thing. We're going to isolate the radical by adding x to both sides. So that gives us the square root of x plus 4 equals x minus 2. I just changed the order here of these terms just because this is more natural to put them in descending order. Now we're going to square both sides. That will give us x plus 4 equals. Now when you square x minus 2, you have to remember, because it's a binomial, that you're going to have to write this binomial twice and do double distributive. It does not work out to be x squared minus 4, you guys. You have to write it as x minus 2. x minus 2. Now I can't erase it. x minus 2 times x minus 2. When you distribute all that out, you'll get x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals x plus 4. Okay, so this is a quadratic equation. We learned how to do this in uh, the, our factoring chapter. When you have this x squared here, your first step is to put all the terms to one side and make it equal 0. So we need to put these terms on this side. So we'll subtract an x and we'll subtract a 4. That makes these terms cancel and this will equal 0. x squared minus 5x and these will cancel. So now we're solving a quadratic equation now because of this squared in here. The first step is to factor this. So we have a GCF of x. And now we make our little equations. x equals 0. x minus 5 equals 0. So we have two solutions for x. We have x equals 0 and we have x equals 5. We're going to check those solutions. Let's check them over here to the side. All right. Square root of 0 plus 4 minus 0 equals negative 2. The square root of 0 plus 4 would be the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 0 does not equal negative 2. This one does not check out, so x equals 0 cannot be a good solution. Let's try x equals 5. Square root of 5 plus 4 minus 5 equals negative 2. The square root of 5 plus 4 is the square root of 9, which is 3. 3 minus 5 does equal negative 2. So this one checks out. So your only good solution is x equals 5. And that's why you have to check your work when you're working these kinds of equations.
right? This one's more complicated because there are two radicals. Um, this radical is already isolated, but this one is not. Um, it's not possible to isolate this one because to do that, we'd have to divide by two and that would give us a division on this side. They can't be both isolated at the same time. So since this one already is, we're going to go ahead and take this x minus 4 and we're going to square it to get rid of it. That will just give us x minus 4. Um, but that means we have to take this whole side and square it also, which isn't as complicated as it sounds. Um, you got to remember this square is going to square the 2, so that's going to give us a 4, because 2 squared is 4. And then the square can cancel the x minus 16. So this is going to be 4 times x minus 16. So we have x minus 4 equals, when I distribute this, 4x minus 64. And now we just isolate x. We just have an equation we need to solve. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides so I can put my x's all together. So I have negative 4 equals 3x minus 64. And then I'm going to add 64 to both sides. And that gives me 60 equals 3x. And then divide by 3. And we end up with x equals 20. I wrote that wrong. That should be 3, not 2. This should be 3. So we need to check if x equals really does equal 20. Well, we have room down here to check. All right. The square root of x, which is 20, minus 4, equals 2 times the square root of x, which is 20, minus 16. Let's see if it works out. 20 minus 4 is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. 20 minus 16 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So this does check out. So this is a good solution, x equals 20. have a couple of applications of uh, solving radical equations uh, with some geometry. So these are interesting questions. Solve for x, then find the missing side. The perimeter of the triangle is 13 feet. So the perimeter here is what's important because we're going to have to use that to figure out what to do with this. How do we find the perimeter of a triangle? We just add the three sides together. So if we add these three amounts, it should equal 13. So that's going to be the beginning of our equation. So we're going to write that over here. The perimeter is 13, and that should equal 3 plus 3 plus the square root of x plus 5. And that's those three sides added together, equaling the perimeter. And now we're just going to start simplifying this. So we have 13 equals 3 plus 3 is 6 plus the square root of x plus 5. Uh, we need to isolate this square root here, so we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. 13 minus 6 is 7. These cancel. Equals the square root of x plus 5. And now we can get rid of the square root by squaring, and we have to do that to both sides. So 49 equals x plus 5. Subtract the 5 we get x equals 44. Does it really work? Can we mentally put this back in here and see if 44 works? 44, let's see, go back to my original equation. 44 plus 5 would be 49. The square root of 49 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10, plus another 3 is 13. So it does check out. All right, so we've solved for x. But we haven't quite finished this question yet because it, that was just the first part. Solve for x. And then it says find the missing side. This is the missing side. So we have to substitute x in there. That would be 44 plus 5, which is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. 
So the missing side equals seven units or seven feet. Let's try this one. Solve for x and then find the length. The perimeter of the rectangle is 22 feet. And again, perimeter is all the sides added together. So we can write an equation that says 22 equals, and we're, I'm just going to add these sides together, 2 plus 2 plus, you know what, I just had an, a, another idea. Let's erase that. Let's go with the, the formula for perimeter. 2 times length plus 2 times width. If the perimeter is 22, that would be 2 times the length. And we know the length is the square root of x minus 3. And 2 times the width, plus 2 times the width, the width is 2. So that's our equation. So 22 equals... 2 times the square root of x minus 3 plus 2 times 2, which is 4. So we need to isolate this. First thing we're going to do is subtract 4 from both sides. 22 minus 4 is 18. And then we're going to divide by 2 to get rid of that 2 in front of our square root. So 18 divided by 2 is 9 equals the square root of x minus 3 because these two's canceled. Now we're going to square both sides to get rid of the radical. 9 squared is 81, and this is going to be x minus 3. And then we can just add 3 to isolate the x, and that makes 84. All right, so I don't know if we can mentally put this back in here to see if it works. Let's put this back in our original equation. 84 plus 3 is 87. Oh, no, my, it's minus 3. I'm sorry, not plus 3. 84 minus 3 is 81. The square root of 81 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Plus 4 equals 22. So it does check out. All right, well, we solve for x. x equals 84. We have to find the length of this rectangle. This is the length. The length equals the square root of x minus 3. x is 84. 84 minus 3 is 81. The square root of 81 is 9. So the length equals 9 feet.